Good morning. So, today is the start of the days that everyone dreads. Wearing a Tyvek suit, a respirator, and breathing in a blade of paint, aka sanding days. Once we get her all stripped down, we'll be going over our refit plans, so make sure to stay tuned for that later in the episode. But for now, let's get sanded. Last time on Abandon Comfort, usually when we're talking like this with yep. the camera, it's usually about money. So if there's anything to take away from our series is that you can find old, high quality sailboats at an affordable price. Let's go ahead and give you a tour. Exactly how we'd want it to be. It's well optimized. Well, it's the day that no one has been waiting for. boat stand so it's the regular yard stand right there this is the trailer stand right here so just brought that down and now we're getting behind there that has all the weight on it right there so happy we got one of those finally done with the port side my hands are shaking so what we're gonna do next is a little test we got a sandblaster and we're going to sandblast the starboard side to see how it compares to the port side and see how much faster it goes compared to this. Hopefully a lot faster and hopefully this is a lot easier. Life can break I think that's enough for one day. See you in the morning. Yeah, we still got a ways to go. Let's get back to work. So as Kelsey is picking up the sand that we're gonna recycle, or the glass, I should say, I'm taking down these stanchions. And the interior of this boat is in great shape, but the exterior, especially the trailer, is in really rough shape. Now that's because it sat in the yard for over a decade. It went through Hurricane Sandy. Nothing's been done to it since then, so. Interior is great, which is not a big deal to us because we're not touching it. The only thing we're doing is building inserts, so not much going on in the interior, but 
exterior wise, the boat's got a long way to go. So while Kelsey's doing the, the reclaiming of the sand, we've got these big pins that are in the stands. Unfortunately, they haven't moved in over a decade, so these things are pretty stuck in there. This is our third one, and we've been able to get everyone down, but it takes a lot of hammering, a ton of WD-40, and a lot of back and forth with this. So we got the sandblaster for free. And it is definitely worth what we paid for because it has been breaking non-stop, which it just did right now. So I'll show you what it looks like when we're fixing it. A lot of it is just back flushing stuff because there's the metal that's part of the pot is disintegrating, so that's clogging all the lines. So a lot of back flushing, but we've got to know the machine like the back of our hand, and we went from knowing absolutely nothing about media and sandblasters to being pretty damn close to being able to fix anything that goes wrong with it. Okay. Like I said, a lot of back flushing and boring stuff. Well, that's really good. And I can see straight in that. That's clear. So that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook the hose back up to this, back flush it out. And we should be good to get back in business. All right, we're back in action. Wait where you belong. Well, we made our way up to the tree line when the cloud fell down and covered us in white. All right, bad news. Sandblaster is needing to be back flushed about every 10 minutes of runtime. So, we're back to the reliable belt sander and orbital and palm sander, and we're gonna finish this thing up. And there's not much left, but man, it's taken a while. And just for comparison's sake, this starboard side of the boat is probably about 75% sandblasted when the whole thing's gonna be done. And then obviously that the port side's 100% sanded, so we'll still be able to compare the 75% of the starboard side that we did sandblast to the 100% of the port side hull that we did sand. Yes, we belong here with the great Tetons. Can you believe it? No. That took so long. <laughs> but it's finally done. All right. We are done. Show her off. We still have to hit the water line with that little drill bit that we showed you guys on the other side. But something's missing. We still have to do the rudder. <laughs> <laughs> we were pretty stoked there for a second. So, yeah, the rudder. That's the thing that steers <laughs> the ship. That little thing. Yeah, that Attaches little thing. It's right here. It is also covered in red paint. Yep, so we'll do that. And then we get a beer. That. Yep. Okay. So a lot of you have asked about some of the parts that weren't shown. The rudder, bow sprit, and the boom. And all of that was in the previous owner's basement. Yeah, all the sails, boom. 
everything was well protected in the owner's basement. So everything looks great. With the rudder, he had it rebuilt. It was brought down and he recorded it because when the, the surveyor, when he bought it in like early 2000, most surveyors, they'll use a moisture meter like we do. And more often than not, there's usually bronze or metal in a rudder and that'll trigger the moisture meter. In this case, that happened. He rebuilt the rudder and the guy that rebuilt the rudder was like, dude, there was like no water in here. I didn't even need to rebuild the rudder, but this thing's freshly rebuilt, so it's in great shape. And we just need to take off this old bottom paint. Yep. This bottom paint is probably not nearly as old as that. All right, this is enough time lapse for today. Let's already get to the beers part. Pretty much done. That feels good. Yeah, so we got these full face. Let me grab them. Over there. We got these full face masks and respirators, and they are marvelous. Definitely worth the money. They are quite expensive, about 150 bucks each, but yeah, they were well worth it. What did you think? Sandblaster versus sanding. What does a better job? If the sandblaster worked full time, consistently, absolutely a sandblaster. Yeah, it tears up the gel coat a lot less, yep. but using the like, recycled media. Yeah, the recycled glass, it really didn't tear it up that much. The problem was we got the media blaster, dustless blaster, whatever it's called. We got that for free. It was loaned to us for free by my uncle. He's like, oh, I have a sandblaster. He runs a, like an equipment rental company. He owns it. And he's like, oh, I've had this sandblaster like in the backyard for the past like year or two. It hasn't run, but you guys can have at it if you want to figure it out. My God. <sighs> it was a huge headache, but when it did work, it was so nice. It just went so fast. Yeah, so fast. Um, like, you don't have to worry about breathing it in. It took so much back flushing and fixing and I had to replace so many different couplings and fittings and air hoses on it that it was probably just worth it to just rent one. <laughs> yeah. So we would highly recommend trying out a sand blaster if you have the option to yeah. versus sanding the whole hall. Absolutely. So our refit plans. Yeah, a lot of you have asked for us to kind of go more in depth with this. So a few episodes ago, we did say that we're gonna be powering this thing with renewable energy. So what we mean by that is an electric engine. We don't know if we're gonna do an outboard or inboard yet. We're leaning towards an outboard. Now, th the next thing is we're actually gonna be doing three forms of propulsion with this boat. That's the thing that I think we're both really excited about. Yeah. So most people just have- Two. Two. But we are gonna add an extra one. And what the third is going to be is oars. Yeah, so it's either gonna be a ULO or we're gonna have two 12 foot sweeps. We might do carbon fiber to reduce on weight. That is the main concern with this, having enough stuff to cruise and then also having your outfit on board. You really have to be conscious about weight. So that's the number one thing that we're concerned with, but we're really excited to have the manual propulsion on board. I think it brings a physical element into it, which is, what we've been missing with sailing, quite honestly. That's why we Ryan's love Ryan's excited for it. Yeah, that's why we love to like <laughs> go climb and stuff because yeah. it's it's more of a physical adventure. This is more, I would say more mental sailing, at least for us. Yeah, but having the ULO or the sweeps, it just allow, allows us to have a, another option if the electric engine fails us, if our sails rip, get destroyed, whatever, it just leaves another option of us to maneuver. Or if we're just bored and we want to like get some exercise in, because that's kind of hard on a boat. We can just do that. Maybe yeah. maybe for me, not Got for you. It, yeah. <laughs> so with the electric engine, yes, we know that our range will be limited. However, if you've been following us since we had the, the Hubbard Grassy, you will know that we really don't use the engine a lot. I mean, we love sailing off the hook. We love sailing into inlets. It's just what we want to do, really. I, we don't want a motor, we want to sail. Yep. So it's gonna be a true auxiliary engine. 
and that's fine because that's exactly how we treated our diesel before. One of the things that we hear is we need to keep the diesel engine because the lithium battery bank is going to weigh too much, the electric engine is going to weigh too much, all little bits of it. From what we found so far, we'll go more in depth in it, but what we found is including the diesel engine, all the extra fuel that we would have on board, that would weigh more than what we plan to do with our battery bank, battery bank and electric yeah. and all of that. And we're gonna go way more in depth with that, just like we did the synthetic teak versus regular teak and actually showed you like the true results, not like the misinformation that's all online about it. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the electric engine. And a lot of the projects that we're gonna be doing, they might seem like controversial or against conventional wisdom because I mean, we're taking out a diesel that's in a crate and could be quickly installed and we're putting in a brand new electric engine. We're going on a smaller boat. Like we're going to show you the facts as we see it and how it works out. And that's, that's really what we're excited about with like all of these projects. And quite honestly, they're like sexy projects. They're not, <laughs> they're not like this. This is probably the worst it's going to get this and yeah. fiberglass work. But yeah. then after that, I mean, we've got a lot of fun stuff. We're going to do stainless steel lifelines around the boat with the help of his brother. Yeah, my brother's a welder, so we're gonna have all that on tap. And one thing that we didn't mention that we're doing is solar and hydro. Yeah, I mean, we need a, <laughs> we need a way to recharge the battery bank. Yeah. So that's still up in the air. Uh, we can't have too much solar on this, obviously. It's pretty small. Weight as well. And weight, yeah. We can't have weight up there because that'll affect stability and all that stuff. So we're working on different ways of doing that, but what we're looking at more than likely is three to four hours of runtime on the electric engine, which is way more than we need. I mean, we, I, I literally can't even think of a time, other than like when we were in the canal with the old boat, when we had to run the engine yeah. for that long. Yeah. So all these projects, I mean, they're gonna be a lot of fun and we're both really excited about it. Like I said, this one is probably gonna be the most boring, but we wanted to compact it all into one episode and this is a long time. This is probably like two to three weeks worth of work yeah. total. Yeah. Compacted into one episode just because like any other real cruiser that's out there, they know that like you don't sand the bottom in one take. Like you usually do it in like patches over multiple months and like mix it up with other projects. But just for the sake of the video, we wanted to do it all in one shot. And you guys don't want to see three videos of us standing. No. No, no. one wants to see that. No one wants to see <laughs> that, but that's the reality of it, you know? I mean, we want to try and make this as real as possible. That's why we're mentioning this, but at the same time, we don't want to bore you with three episodes of sanding. So, it's all sanded. Now we can move on to the fun projects. Cheers. Happy this is done. You did a great job. My fingers hurt. <laughs> All right, see you guys.